Looks like Honda have finally turned the page. No, they still don't believe in lending their motorcycles for reviews to a journalist because they are Honda, I guess they don't need to. So shout out to Shubham for trusting us with his price possession. But what they have done is Honda have now reduced the price of the 2023 CB300R to a more sensible 2.4 lakhs, thereby overnight turning this into a strong contender in this highly contested segment. And there is a whole lot going for it. So first and foremost, I love this Neo retro styling. You have upside down forks. You have a segment first uh, IMU based ABS system, which takes into account the bike's pitch under hard braking. But more importantly, at the heart of the matter, you have a 286cc liquid cooled four valve DOSC setup, which pumps out 30.7 horses and 27.5 newton meters of torque. I know what you're thinking, that doesn't seem like a whole lot. But when you take into consideration the CB300R's ridiculously low 146 kg curb weight, things start getting very, very interesting. All right. 146 kgs, almost 31 horsepower. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Only one way to find out. <laughs> and the CB300R delivers in spades. I mean, when was the last time you could do a power wheelie in the first gear on a 300cc single from a Honda? for a road bike. I for sure did not see that coming. It reminds me more, or feels more like a KTM than a Honda. And look at it, we were already in the fourth gear. I think that is the secret. What makes the CB300R so engaging is the closely stacked six-speed transmission and the really strong mid-range, which makes it so damn engaging to ride. I also love how smooth this is, man. Yeah, you can only feel the buzz now around 7,000 RPM. But it's buttery smooth below. Yeah, this is hands down the most exciting Honda I've ridden in I don't know how many years. Oh, just wish. It had a quick shifter, as that would make it even more fun. And don't get me wrong, the six-speed transmission on this is very precise as you expect on a Honda. It's just not as slick as I wish it would be. But man, as I shift through the gears using the clutch, I love how light the slip and assist clutch is to operate. And by the looks of it, it is also more than keen <laughs> to play ball when you want to have some fun. But the only thing which has left me wanting a little bit on this tiny little thing is, yeah, the brakes. because I was expecting a lot more from the 296 millimeter disc which is mated to the four pot radial caliper from Nissan but the front lever, brake lever has a very wooden feel to it and also doesn't have the, yeah, the bite that I was expecting now this very well could be down to the MRF tires which clearly do not have the grip to put all this stopping power down. And I also, whoa, yeah, possibly the CB300R's worst enemy in corners 
because these are the same tires that we have experienced over the years on the KTM RC200 and hated them because of their design because the rear tire has this lip on the edge which means when you lean the bike all the way over the lip starts squatting which causes the bike to be really unstable and that is really a shame because looking at how beautifully this thing is turning and the firm sporty setup of the suspension means that the tires are actually robbing us of exploring the full potential of the CB300 in corners but on the practical side this is also scoring really high because when I first looked at the bike and how compact it is I did not expect to fit so well on it I'm 5'11 and I fit on it just fine it's surprisingly spacious you have a nice commanding view the seat is also very accessible at 801 millimeters you also have a very decent 153 mm of ground clearance to scale our tallest speed breakers and when you combine the 146 kg curve weight to that equation that makes the CB300 possibly one of the easiest motorcycles to ride around in the city but in the city in the urban jungle what will really get to you is this I don't know why on earth Honda thought it would be a good idea to swap the position of the horn with the indicator and that can get really annoying especially in a country like ours where we use the horn as a primary form of communication on the road in terms of tractability is even though the gear ratios on this are quite close to each other this is still a four valve DOHC rev happy engine so if you want to ride around in the third gear yeah you have to keep it around 2700 rpm or otherwise you have to feather the clutch because there's not much below 2700 rpm this is also not really designed for touring because the seat doesn't have enough padding the tank is only 9.7 liters the suspension as I mentioned is not the most plush on broken roads like this and also even though the engine is really smooth you do feel the wipes kick in around 7000 rpm which means that even though the motorcycle is capable of going a whole lot faster the ideal cruising speed the happy spot of the CB300 hour on the highway would be 120 225 kilometers per hour that's about it this essentially leaves us with the million dollar question which is what do you choose between the Honda CB300R and the all new KTM Duke 250 considering that both of them make similar power and are priced the same. When it comes to the KTM, it undoubtedly wins the value for money proposition because it also comes with a quick shifter as standard, also gets stickier tyres and better brakes. The Duke also has a bigger 15 litre tank and even as a motorcycle, it's much much bigger compared to this insanely compact CB300R which frankly makes me look like a giant when I'm riding it but when it comes to pure riding experience the Honda is arguably the most exciting motorcycle that I have ridden especially in this price segment